You're good. Good afternoon. Hello, thank you for joining us today. I am Heidi, Simon's mama here at Simon Says Stamp, and we are in the Simon Says Stamp studio, ready for fall. Cozy hugs all around. If you've seen our newest Simon Says Stamp release, we named it Cozy Hugs just in time for the season. And today we've got lots of things to share with you. Inspiration, new product, and for the first time ever, which is why I'm a little bit nervous and why I was a little bit late, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of on-screen demoing because here's why. It's not usually my thing. I like to create in private. I like to be with my music loud. I like to feel no other eyes on my hands, but uh, there are some products that I love so much that I've been inspired by. As anybody here at Simon will tell you, they've been on my table in my office since August. Um, hello, Tim Holtz Ideology products. And I've been playing with them and experimenting with them. And Tammy B from Plays Well With Paper on Instagram, Tammy Bastions, I think I said her name right, I hope I did, Tammy, uh, inspired me so much with her confectionery coffin that we did something with Tammy's permission very similar in a kit for you. And so we're gonna showcase that a little bit later on in today's live because there's some really fun products in it that you can alter in fun ways and I could go on and on. Again, I'll save that for the end. Thank you for joining us live. If you're watching us live today, we've got a special treat for you. Reed has a $200 gift card for anybody who's watching us today live. All you have to do is chat, engage, share, where are you from? He is going to choose a $200 winner, gift card winner from the chat. I don't know if you have the chat enabled on your YouTube right now. There's a few buttons in the bottom of the window that you can toggle so that you can view the chat. You can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, you can even add emojis, my favorite thing, into the chat and we can engage and talk to each other. This is such a great community. We have a lot of things in common, and first and foremost, while we're here today, is definitely making and crafting and creating, and this is a good opportunity for us to all share together. So introduce yourselves. I see we've got Diane Blessing. Nice to meet you, Diane. I, I have not seen you in one of our lives before. Welcome. We've got Gina Ware. Heather, I think that Beth from Simon Says Stamp is moderating today, yep. I've gotta thank Reed and Brian, they do so much behind the scenes. Reed sets all of these things up for us. Look, he even got, I mean, how cute is that little hay bale? Hay, hay bale? Where did you find that hay bale from? That was right? a party city. Party city, the cutest little hay, hay bales for your desk or your office. He did, he did have a disclaimer, he's like, when you open it, be careful, because the little shreds of hay get everywhere. Is it hay or straw, is it the same thing? Kind of. I don't know, I'm a country girl, I should know that. I grew up with everybody around me bailing hay for the summer. And then he blew up the balloons. We've got a little Halloween festivities in the, in the house and you're gonna see some really cool candy corn coming up. I've got my candy corn earrings on. We've even got candy corn trees behind us. And Tim Holtz Ideology, there's some candy corn in that that I'll be showing you a little bit later too. So today's products that we'll start with are all from our new Cozy Hugs release. The focus and emphasis on this release is definitely the season. There's a lot of things for fall and autumn. You've got a few little pieces of taste of upcoming season for Christmas. For those of you who are working on your Christmas or your holiday projects already, I don't know how you do it. I am really immersed in Halloween. I've even got uh, some uh, orange in my fingernails that you might see when we demo. I've been trying to get a get a alcohol ink because it sticks on your fingernails for a while. I'm definitely Halloweened up, for sure. And uh, before I, I want to make sure before we switch cameras, Reed, to show the product. Did I get everything? Oh, thank you to the designers. We've got makers all around wor the world who have made things using this Cozy Hugs release that we will be showcasing here in a minute. Reed's gonna switch the camera for me and I will showcase the products and the inspiration for you. And please, don't be shy. Chat with us, share what you're thinking. I've got, oh my goodness, it goes pretty fast. Can there I even see? There's 700 people in here right now. Oh my, it's going pretty fast. I see Vivian, Sherry, oh my gosh. So, welcome. We're gonna move the camera and we're gonna get started on this inspiration, okay? Thank you, Reed. Here we go. Okay, I'm gonna move my little stuff out of the way. 
Now you heard me talk about the season. Look at this. Our friends here in the United States celebrate Turkey Day. And I know that other people celebrate Thanksgiving as well. Does Canada celebrate maybe in October, November time period too? If you're Canadian in your chat, what, when do you celebrate your Thanksgiving? We celebrate Thanksgiving with turkey. And it really, like all other things, kind of like Cyber Monday has evolved into Cyber Week, Thanksgiving has even evolved into, in addition, Friendsgiving. I know it's really popular with a lot of people to get together for Thanksgiving, and we now call it Friendsgiving when your friends get together and we all cook and bake and share our favorite foods for the holiday. The stamp set by Nina Marie Trapani, thank you Nina, is called Turkey Day. How adorable are these turkeys? You can do little place settings with them. You can send your invites with them. Even if you're a vegetarian, we've got things for you on this set. Here we have inspiration. Oh, I've got to get, oh my gosh. Look, sneak peek of what's to come. I've got a snow globe of eyeballs. <laughs> Nobody told me that. Uh -huh. Hey, Heidi, I know you're showing turkey, but you have a snow globe of eyeballs in the screenshot. <laughs> I'll move that out of the way for now. We've got a little round card by Diane Morales. Again, thank you to everybody who has sent their art and their makes for today's project. You can find Diane to dot sisters project at Instagram. I like how she made a round card. It's always different to see. The, you're going to see we've got a lot of different sized cards. I've got, I'm telling you what, I'm a little bit off my game today because I'm not usually making on screen. So, but I can't wait to do it. I'll show you what we've got up our sleeve. This is a slimline, a mini slimline card, also by Diane. I like how she put turkeys side by side. Another for the vegetarians in the house. This one also by Diane. Boy, Diane, you really like this stamp set. Nina, I'm glad, so Nina originally did it as a Thanksgiving stamp set. And uh, as we were looking through the sentiments, I started to think about how, uh, this one's by Susie Plantamura, how so many of us are celebrating friends giving more than ever. So I said, can we maybe add in a few sentiments that are friends giving related? Uh, Jean Doringsfield, I like how she did, I don't think I've seen this before, where somebody actually divided the front of the card in half like this. It's really interesting to see. It's interesting. Got another one by Studio JD, also known as Jean Doringsfeld. She's at Jean at Studio, oh wait, that's probably her email. I don't know if you want that. She's Studio JD, and you can find her also on YouTube. Here's another card. Uh, this one is by Joe Sasavith. Oh, Joe, you have been coloring. He's really well known for his blending and his shading and his coloring. And again, all of these cards are using the Turkey Day stamp set. It's available exclusively at Simon Says Stamp while supplies last. And this card is by Meg's, Meg Brooks. So all of this variety of cards with one simple stamp set. All the things we can do. We can add embellishments, we can use uh, pattern paper, we can change the shapes of our cards. What I'm hoping today will do for you is to inspire you to make and create. Make your cards, make your projects, make your tags, make your envelopes, make your mixed media, make your canvas. This has been really popular, Pumpkin Pie Slice. If you're looking for more inspiration using these products, all you have to do is look it up on our website. This one you could search S800, which is this item number. You could also search Pumpkin Pie Slice. And when you find it on the website, you'll see this inspiration, Barbara Terriau created this, and lots more inspiration. If the maker has done a video or a blog post or some kind of how-to, uh, to make the project, you will also find a link to the project with the inspiration on the website. And I think that helps a lot of people uh, who want to imitate that card or emulate it or copy it, how, whatever word you want to use. I, I, the word copy always sounds so terrible, but I'm kind of a copier. Like I, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I look, I, like I would see this card, I don't know, is it bad? It reads over there laughing, but 
<laughs> but I like to see, so Susie created this card. So this card inspires me. I could see pulling out exactly these products, maybe some different colors, and trying to mimic, imitate, um, I guess they say imitation is the best form of flattery, uh, the card. And it's interesting, see this background? This background, ooh, this is another embossing folder. Let me grab it for you. Dun, dun, dun. Is, oh, good. I'm glad Reed found this embossing folder for you. So this is an embossing folder called Forest Floor. Very interesting embossing folder. See, I wouldn't be copying exactly. I would use the same product and make, make it my own. I would embellish it in different ways. I would use a different size card. I would color it in a different way. But isn't it interesting the pattern that that embossing folder makes? This is a Simon Says Stamp Deeply Etched 3D embossing folder. And this Thankful used another embossing folder. This is a set. So these dies are sold along with this embossing folder and they all come together in this packaging. So this is called Sterling Labels SFD 300 and when you take it out of the packaging you'll see that there's a whole set of dies and then this deeply etched embossing folder and that's how Susie created this thankful label tag and then she just put any sentiment she wanted inside of it. A lot of our Simon Says sentiment strips fit inside of these labels and also any, most any stamped images, you just have to size which label you want and which stamp set you're using and your eyes will tell you if they're going to fit together or not. But I like that concept of, there's two big concepts here. I like the concept of this embossing folder that can be colored to create the background and I also love this concept of embossing your own labels and using the dies that come with it, they coordinate to cut it out. Read what's happening. Uh, they're just asking, do our embossing folders work with most major uh, document issues? Yes, they do. And if you look at the embossing folder listings on our website, we do our best to um, put different recipes. I think people call them recipes in the listing, uh, which is essentially which plates to use with which machines and you know honestly I'm a trial and error girl I use my plates and try to figure out what fits where I'm not really great at reading directions but if you want directions we definitely have them on our on our website this is another one of those embossing folders that comes with the cutting dies and you'll see this release has two birdhouses in it this one is called snowy birdhouse and you can tell by the card here, this card was made by Susie Plantamura. The snowy birdhouse actually has wood grain uh, birdhouse. So it's like a wood grain birdhouse. And this other card made by Meg Brooks, love how these are embellished, uh, also uses this birdhouse. And you'll see that the embossing folder has a wood pattern on it, a wood grain pattern, so that when it, when you run this through your embossing machine, the wood grain pattern is created for you. Reed, I hope you're asking a question I can answer. I don't uh, know. It's, just, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a personal preference, but oh, okay. I asked you what order do you uh, use these tools? Do you emboss first, then die cut, or do you die cut, then emboss? Oh, I 100% think it's personal preference. I, I mean, I find it easier to emboss and then cut. I, I mean, there might, I can't say that's the only way to do it. I think you've got to do whatever works for you. You've got to play, experiment, try different things, find your comfort zone. I think the process of playing and finding your comfort zone uh, is really important because then you get to try different things. And you discover things along the way that are completely unexpected. I always tell my husband that. when. I don't know how I'm relating this to marriage, but I am. So I had this idea in my head of what I wanted in a husband my whole life. And well, not my whole life until I met my husband. And it was totally different. When I met my husband, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many, this sense of humor. He's got a great sense of humor. I didn't have that on my wish list. He was a little bit older. I didn't have that on my wish list. So, you know, I dated a lot of, what do they say? I kissed a lot of frogs to find my prince. So along the way, you try different uh, techniques. You Try, I don't know, there is actually a kissing technique, ironically. You try things and see what you like. Try it, play, experiment. It's all part of the process. It's part of the journey, and the journey is the fun. I love this card. This is by Cindy at CRN Crafts. 
She used the glistening snowflakes embossing. Oh, that's how she got all that glitter. She used the Simon Says Stamp glitter paper. She actually ran our Simon Says Stamp glitter paper through the embossing plate. See, that's, exic that's a great example of experimenting and playing. I wouldn't have thought to run our glitter paper through the embossing plate, and she did. And I love the magic that it created. And this is another one of those embossing folders that comes with a die. And this came with a snowflake, so she cut the negative and then laid the positive intricately, see how intricate that is, on top. So she just used her cutout, added some white, and twisted it so it creates a more emphasized snowflake. And this is one Barbara Terriel created. You can see this in our graphic on our website right now. We loved this so much. She used our Simon Red Metallic cardstock. See how it has a little bit of like a burnish look to it too? And she ran it through the embossing folder love it embellished it with little tiny sequins i mean oh, i love these so back to birds i'm kind of going a little bit back and forth here this embossing folder is called friendly birds so you can use the embossing folder by itself and it's going to create a great background you can stop there or you can go and use your embossing folder and then add the dies and cut out your birds. That's what Susie Plantamura did here. And then here, Barbara Terriel, she elected not to cut out her birds and she left the card all as one. So experiment, do what you like, do what you want. Find your happy place. This one is called Leafy greens. We have another embossing folder with a coordinating die. Am I yeah. scrubbing a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry. Fine. Does that help any? Did my mic go out? No, you're good. You're still talking. Okay. Maybe I've got my uh, jet pack on my uh, hip. Weird. Do I? Should I take my jet pack out? Okay. Time for a little bit of a Want me to mute it and then unmute it? No. We're good now that I got my jet pack out? Okay. All right, I'll put my little, I don't know if they call it jet pack. I don't know all the technical <laughs> terms for these things. Thanks for Brian and Reed for keeping an eye on things. So this is called the Leafy Greens, and it's an embossing folder with a die. And you can see how Barbara Terriel took it one step further. She actually cut an oval out of it and created this beautiful card. This bird is part of our new Cozy Hugs collection too. It's called Layered Warbler. So if you look at S794 on our website, you can see lots of inspiration using this Layered Warbler. This was illustrated by our friends at Memory Box exclusively for Simon Says Stamp. Thank you to our friends at Memory Box. Dave is a great partner for us. He also illustrated this Ginkgo Leaves embossing folder. And you can see here how Michelle Peckham created that card. See those ginkgo leaves in the background, nice and subtle, and you can do all kinds of fun things on the, on the front. Uh, options really truly are endless. Another embossing folder with dies. You guys have been loving this. I think part of it, this Barbara Terry, this card, Sherry put in a lot of our storefront graphics for the Cozy Hugs release. And I think you guys have really fallen in love with these sweaters. So you'll see, this is an embossing folder that cuts these five, or uh, embosses these five shapes. You can leave them like that, or you can lay your dies on top of them. I would do it, like I said before, after I embossed. And then you can create these beautiful, look at the sweater. Look at the dimension on that. Now I think Barbara added a little ink on the top of that to make the uh, texture on that sweater pop out a little bit more. And then this one, I'm trying to think, I don't think there's any products. This. The uh, mug. Oh my gosh, Reed, you are so good. This mug right here is part of the set. I was looking, I was so busy looking at the, the leaves in the background. Again, this is all from the Autumn Knits embossing folder and dies. These are available at Simon Says Stamp, exclusively available at Simon Says Stamp. Berry stems, I have to hide, this was originally intended to be a release for Stamp Timber and we fell a little behind in our production. So we're releasing this as part of Cozy Hugs, which really is good timing for us because look at the card. It's very festive. It's very seasonal. Added a Kathy Zilski Joyful. 
sentiment in the front. This is made by Callie Person. I believe, Callie, are you in the live today? Don't forget, anybody who's in live today, thank you for sending us, Callie. Don't forget, anybody who's watching us live today, chat so that we can see your name, talk to your friends, tell us where you're from. Do you like these products? What would you like to see more of? Again, we have a stamp timber thing here. This we had to delay for cozy hugs if you want to know top secret, uh, but it is perfect in time for the season. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And this was by Cindy at CRN Crafts. So she used that die and layered it on top of a, um, what do you want to call it? A background, a layered background. Is my, is my mic time. still? No, you're good. That's actually oh. the stencil right here that she created the background with. Oh, you got my eyeballs. Thank you for yeah. moving that. Oh, so if you're wondering how Cindy created the snow in the background, she used this new Snowfall stencil. Thanks for grabbing that for me, Reed, because yeah, that is a good fit. I put the black paper behind it so you could see it a little bit better. Just in time for the season. And then there's hills that you can make, hills, trails. If you've got those cute stamps, I've seen a lot of stamps out this season that have little sledders on it. Sledders are always fun to make go down a hill. Here is a joy from, um, does anybody in the chat, can somebody refresh my memory where this joy die comes from? It was paired by Allison Frazier. Thank you, Allison. She used this set of background, this set of stamps as a background. It, the set is called, I almost need my glasses, Simple Holiday Greetings. I like how Allison built a background using this stamp set. However, please note, these stamps are all individual stamps. So you can use them on the inside of a card, on the front of a card. You don't have to use them all at once, although this is a really cool idea. You can also use them separately. You can tell in this camera shot how they're all individual. Now, don't be afraid. Some people like to cut their clear stamps. I'm one of those people. I'm not afraid to cut my clear stamps. If I just was looking for the word happy, I might cut it off of there. I can always add Christmas as a second stamp, but if you're not into cutting your stamps, please know anyway, all of these sentiments are separate. I love that card, Allison. That was a good idea for you to use those stamps as a background. Also, uh, where is my Mary? This is by Kathy Zilski. Kathy, if you're here in the chat today, you did a wonderful job designing the words we all want to use. This is Mary, Mary word and shadow die. It's got the word and a shadow behind it. And you can see here, Joe Sasavith. Thank you, Joe, for sending this card. You can see that he actually used the shadow with vellum to create that Mary background. And he added the word Christmas from our other uh, release from, la from year priors, one of the years prior, I don't know if it was last year, we have a Christmas die, very intricate word. He blended with the word Mary. And then he used our cling candy cane stamp to create that background. I love this, Joe. It really does give me the candy feel, which I think you guys, you guys are gonna see more of the candy feel at the end of our live today when I showcase some making in front of you live on screen. Do you remember Shrinky Dink? Well, I do. We have Shrinky Sheets just now available for you for the season. It's the very beginning of the season. I can't wait to see what people do with these Shrinky Dinks, or I'm sorry, Shrinky Sheets. These are Shrinky Sheets inspired by um, Shrinky Dink, which I believe is probably trademarked, but these do the same thing. You heat them, you melt them. Um, and these are uh, available to you in a pack of six clear sheets. They're eight and a half by five and a half. So there's actually six sheets in here. Uh, not to be confused with acetate, clear acetate. We do have clear acetate as well, uh, but that's different. That doesn't shrink when you heat it. We have heat resistant acetate. It just doesn't shrink. Before you move on from that, there yeah. is a quick tip video if you oh. instructions for the shrink. Good, good reminder. So if you look this up on our website, STO109, you'll see a video with it, quick tips how to use it, and we also posted the video on our YouTube channel, how to use shrink sheets. And more to come for the making season because these shrink sheets can be used for a lot of making. Uh, here's Peace on Earth. I'll move forward a little bit. This has a shadow with it as well. I don't know if you can kind of see the die right there. You can use the shadow or use them individually. I love this card. 
Barbara Terrial, love, love, love. She used the stamp set I'm gonna show you next with this piece on earth. And then love this card too, Cindy. Beautiful work. Our makers are on fire. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So I was mentioned the snowflake from a stamp I'm gonna show next, and this is that stamp set. It's called Glistening Snowflakes, illustrated by Christina Warner. Christina, we love this. She is star of May on Instagram. She just posted, I think it was yesterday, it might have been the day before. I think she used, she used this for either 30 or 40 cards. She's like, how to make 30, how to make a lot of cards all at once. And she used this stamp set. Today, I've got some inspiration for you by Callie Person using this stamp set. Also, by Callie. I like how she's doing the moody blues in the background. And this is a simple, beautiful by Michelle Peckham. Michelle also used a product I'm going to show um, coming soon in this card, so I'll set it to the side. She used an embossing folder. Whoop! There went my pack. Can you guys still hear me? Yep, there's a glistening snowflakes embossing folder as part of the collection too. Well, I'll tell you what, instead of showing you the embossing folder, I'll show you what the embossing folder does. It's called Glistening Snowflakes and it created this beautiful background that then Michelle used to stamp uh, one of the snowflakes. Oh my God, Reed, can, Reed, gosh, Reed, you can find anything. <laughs> this is that Glistening Snowflakes. Uh, embossing folder with dye. No, I'm wrong. That's not it? I'm calling it glistening snowflakes and it's not. Um, this embossing folder in the background is to be named. Maybe it's from a future release. That'd be cool. I don't know. Beth and Susan are in our chat. Can anybody identify what was used to create this beautiful snowflake background? I called it glistening snowflake and that was not right. So to be continued, we will give you that information coming soon. Now, cozy hugs, we talk about hugs. Hugs are a good, whether it's a card hug or an in-person hug. Fiddly Leaf by Meg Brooks. She used this dye over and over and over again to create a wreath and put a sentiment in the middle of it. Very clever idea. I'm rounding out the inspiration in case you guys can't tell. This is one of my favorites. I think that, whew, I can't decide, oh man, I can't decide between this and the snowflakes what I'm gonna use to make my uh, Christmas cards with this year. This is called Let It Snow. This is a Kathy Zilski design. Zach just texted me this morning he's gonna make Christmas cards using the stamp set. He actually showed, he actually sent some pictures already. Uh, Zach's one of our new Simon Sassamp family members here. And this again is called Let It Snow. You can purchase it with the dies or you can purchase the die separately, it's up to you. Look at this shaker card by Callie. Boy, Callie, you are amazing. I think Callie's joining us all the way from Vietnam today. Oh, Nina, Nina got the answer. That was from that snowflake that we showed a little bit ago. It was from a pre previous release, maybe called Oval Snowflake. Oh, yeah. Okay. Snowflake Oval Frame. Snowflake Oval Frame is what was created to use that. Doo -doo. Back to regularly scheduled programming. Mm -hmm. And how simple and fun is this card by Miriam Prantner? using Kathy's Let It Snow release. I love it. I love that shading in the background too. Thank you, Miriam, for sending in beautiful art for us. Okay, I'm rounding out the inspiration. I'm getting close to the making time. Here is a cling stamp called Painted Christmas Wreath. This is made by our friends at Stampers Anonymous. It's actually two stamps. I'll take it out of this packaging so you can see what I mean. Uh, we try to get as much value in our stamps as possible. So you can stamp it all at once like this, which I believe is what Callie did in this card, or you can perform magic on the stamp and you can peel the stamp and just, oh, there's actually an extra part there, which is easy to peel off. Peel that off and you can just use that sentiment anywhere. You can also use your wreath anywhere. So you can play with it, line it up. 
You can just use this on your cards. You could just use this on your cards. You can use them both. You have a lot of options when we do these clink stamps like that. And again, this one is called Painted Christmas Wreath. Well, you guys are seeing a lot of products that we couldn't get into our stamp timber <laughs> release. You know, it's we're not, you know, the stamping in the card making industry is not the only one that's having supply chain problems. I think just about every industry that we deal with right now um, in the human race has supply chain. So we it's no big deal. We just moved it into um, a cozy hug release for you. I, I love the colors on this. Barbara Terrial, we're making the season all about all kinds of colors. We're not just limiting ourselves to reds and greens. We've got all kinds of colors. Is my microphone still yeah, okay? Okay, and then I've got a card by Joe Sasavith here. Oh, there is more. Oh my gosh. I can't skip these. I know I told you guys I was rounding out the inspiration, but we haven't showed the bat yet. The bat, the bat was off to the side. Batty for you. How fun is this? Sherry Carroll also has coordinating dies. Sherry created this for you and wait until you see all the fun things our maker made. This is extra fun for us because one of our makers lives so close to our office, she can walk here. Her name is Mary and Mary created that and also Mary Reiner. Thank you, Mary. She dropped these off. I happened to be having a meeting in the cafe when she dropped these off and I got to accept these from Mary in person, which really virtually never happens when the maker is here in our office and dropping them off in person. It was such a delight. I love how Mary uh, folded her bat wings to make them so realistic and added white ink to make them pop out. Now, some people are adding, um, oh, what do you call them, brads to, to their wings to make them pop out as well. Uh, oh, Mary, this one's upside down. Here, this one made me laugh out loud. Here for the booze. Also, a Simon Says Stamp die from a previous release. Look how fun, here for the booze. She put her bat upside down. And look at, she used oxide inks in this background to make that interesting um, galaxy-like almost pattern. And then we do have another piece of candy. I will make a note, if you purchase our stamps and dies called Batty For You as a set on our website, we are also giving you a pack of Art Impressions, sequ or, um, Art Impressions brads. And those brads will help you if you wanna make your bat wings move up and down. There is a way to do that. So if you purchase them together on our website, we're going to give you the brads you need to make your bat wings fly. Last but not least, oh, I did have another inspiration using the bat. This one is by Miriam Prantner. I got it upside, oh, what's up? Fun idea to put them upside down. Yes, Reed. If you'd like to see the bats and brads in motion, you can go to our Instagram. Uh, Sherry Carroll created a reel yesterday doing exactly oh, that. Oh, she did. Okay. Our Instagram has a reel from Sherry Carroll uh, using the bats with the brads. So that'll be fun for you guys to, to check out too. And then here we have our candy cane stencil. It's a set of two. So you can see how you can achieve these multiple colored, this is by Michelle Peckham, they're layering stencils. And I've got this dainty, delicate card by Cindy. See how she layered her stencils to make the candy. And then again, Christmas isn't just red and green. Meg Brooks used the stencils to make her candy. Um, not totally different colors, but I like how she highlighted some of the colors on there. Last but not least, I have the Thanksgiving place card set. If you are hosting at your house or you, if you want to send somebody a message, this set has a, uh, a coordinating die with it so you can make your own place cards. And you can make these place cards, oh, good call. You can make these place cards um, for any occasion. Uh, it does, and especially in the fall, because it's got the pumpkins on them. It doesn't just have to be for Thanksgiving. It could be for Halloween party. And you can see how you can use this stamp set, Susie did, also to make cards. It doesn't have to be place cards. So that's a really fun set. Okay, the nerves are high. Have the people been interacting? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something special. I'm, I mean, usually I say we. But this time, I'm going to say I, because I have been working on this in my office for a while now. Ever since Tammy Bastian's 
posted her confectionery coffin, I started putting together a kit for you all. I'm sorry I'm so abrupt, I ripped the packaging already, but you get the idea. So this kit is on our website right now. We have a limited supply, but it's our creepy confection kit. If you go to the storefront, you'll see it. It includes over $100 worth of, of product value in it. I'm actually gonna take this glass mat off. I don't need it for this demo. Uh, it includes this backdrop shrine. It includes two, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know if you wanna call this shipboard. It's almost like a wood. This is made up with Stampers Anonymous. Funny how you look at this and it's hard to tell what it is, but you pop out this is actually a bat. Uh, there's another bat on here. You pop all of these things out, uh, the, another bat. You have in here also, these are little um, pieces that can be used lining your shells if you want. We've got another bat on this sheet. And then this sheet has, hard to tell when they're all together, but when you start popping them out, you can see you have spider webs, and soon you'll see why I included these in your kit. I will kind of sneak ahead and show you. They do take paint. Oh, I see I stuck a toy. I'm telling you, I'm learning how to make on camera. I'm trying to do that thing where you put it in the oven and you take it out and it's already finished. This does take paint. The surface, these etc. tags take paint beautifully. Here I used paint that is also included in the kit for you. It's the Tim Holtz Black Distress Black Soot um, paint. So that's included in your kit. I also included this red line tape from Simon Says Stamp. And I'll tell you what, this is the secret ingredient for you makers that like to do mixed media projects because red line tape doesn't need to dry. So if you're attaching things to a shelf or if you're attaching your little, oh, I don't know, bats and spiders. Look, I'm just gonna dump this all over here for you all to see. If you're attaching your bats and spiders to your box, the red line tape is the way to go. I do not have the patience for my glue to dry. So that's a little uh, tip for you. I also included two snow globes, and you're gonna see a really interesting way, including making your own creepy eyeball snow globe. You're gonna see a few different ways to use those globes. Again, these take paint nicely too, those bases. These are the older version of the snow globes. Um, there is a new version of snow globes that Tim released this year that has a metal base. I chose these for this kit. You'll see why soon uh, to paint the base. One of your favorite products last year was these bubbles and thank you to Tim and Advantis for bringing these bubbles out again this year. You can do so many things with bubbles and I will show you in a few minutes what I did with my bubbles. They're also great for snowballs. I think probably this kit was mostly um, the most fun for me because of all the candy. So these are also Advantis Tim Holtz Ideology products. There's candy corn and also confections. I love how these candy sticks can be used with alcohol ink. More to come on that as well. Creepy eyeballs are included in your kit. You don't have to make a snow globe out of your eyeballs. Something I've had fun doing with my eyeballs, which is a little unexpected, you can use, alcohol ink is included in the kit. You can use alcohol ink to color your candy. You can also use alcohol ink to creepify. Is that a word? If it's yeah. not, I just made it a word. You can use alcohol ink to creepify your eyeballs. And I do have samples of all this stuff I'm talking about that I will show you after I go through the contents of the kit. There's orange alcohol ink. This one is called Sunset Orange, included in your kit as well. It works great also for coloring your candy, coloring your bubbles. And not, be, not one, but two packs of the candy corn are included in this kit. And you'll see why soon. One pack just wasn't enough. 
I've also included these droplets, Halloween droplets by Tim Holtz and Advantis in your kit. Lots of fun to embellish your shrine. Tim Holtz just commented, uh, really good note, that the snow globes and creepy eyes are retired. So it's one of the few places you can still get them. Oh, uh, that's a good note. Yes, these are retired. So we have them available for you. Yay! Um, but in a very limited supply. Once they're gone, they will be gone and will be retired. Thank you for making that note, Tim. And these are the creepy eyeballs that are um, no longer going to be available once we go through this. And I also am showcasing, this comes to you in a pack of um, two if you buy it as an individual purchase, but for the purposes of this kit, we have included one jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. We have also included, and these are nice, high quality. I wish you guys could feel the heft of these products. We've also included one cauldron for you because I'm telling you, we needed things to put the creepy eyeballs and the candy into, right? We've included a glossy accents, which work beautifully with the bubbles, you'll see soon. A multi-matte medium, not everything is meant to be used with red line tape. So multi-medium matte is great um, to have in um, your kit. We've also included the gilded foundry wax. So if you elect to make anything with a little bit of a gold edge, uh, any of the things in this kit, like maybe you want to add some gold on your bat or even some gold on your shrine. Uh, this foundry wax uh, by Tim Holtz is great. Also included, I'm telling you, all of the things I'm showing right now are included in the kit. We also have a jar of Tim Holtz rock candy glitter, and you'll know why. We have to make our candy glitterified um, in the kit. And then you also are going to receive a pack of paper from Crafter's Companion that give you a lot of different patterns to play with if you want to um, make your shrine have a background. So these are all of the things that come in your kit. Again, it's a limited supply. Some of the products that are in the kit are sold out. I don't know if I told you this, but you do receive a whole package of the bats, which includes two bats, and a bunch of spiders also in the kit. And you'll see an up close personal um, what I did with my bats and spiders here in a minute. I'm going to get this stuff off the work surface so I can show you what on earth would I want to do with all of those creepy supplies. Now the camera is only going to be able to show you this at an angle, but this is what I made. I didn't glue things down because I want to be able to take them out, but see I used the contents I just showed you to make that. See that cauldron? If you put a little bit of tissue or something in the bottom of a cauldron, you'll be able to fill it to the brim with candy corn. Fun idea, right? Fill your cauldron with candy corn. I know this camera is the best, but boy, this is small. I think I'm going to move a little bit closer to the camera. Remember the snow globes that we were talking about a few minutes ago? Well, what if you painted the base of your snow globe black with that black paint, popped your snow globe upside down, and made it a candy container? Fun idea? Well, how would you make, what, what is that? Oh, that's not real candy. That is the glass bubbles. Remember those glass bubbles I showed you? Well, we turned them into candy, and I'm going to show you how. All right. I think next time I'm going to need another table that's already good to go. So I grabbed a little cup. There's a lot of ways to turn your candy, turn your bubbles into candy, but I'm just going to show you my way. I know. It's just like the embossing folders. You can cut before you emboss. You can emboss before you cut. There's more than one way to do it. So how I made these bubbles, I took, oh, those are all too big. I grabbed myself a little container and put the bubbles inside. 
I don't know. I think I'm kind of embarrassed that Tim is even watching this because I don't know if anybody would recommend doing this. But what I did is I took the glass, actually I don't think they're glass, but the bubbles from the kit and I squirted a ton of glossy accents. I know you're, sh I know people are, sh what? <laughs> Wait a minute, she's gonna be messy, yep. I'm messy. I loaded up my bubbles with glue. I just squirted them around there and I use, you, you, I highly recommend that you use the glossy accents. And then I took another container. And remember how I told you we have rock candy glitter in the kit? Oh. I skipped a step, but that's okay. Put, dump your glued up bobbles into the glitter and twist it around and you will see you have your own candied bubbles or some people might even call these snowballs. But hey, I digress. We're talking about Halloween today. So those are your glittered bubbles. If you're wondering how I got them to be orange and yellow, all I did was use the alcohol ink also provided in the kit to make them colored. And because alcohol ink dries really quickly, I made them colored before I added the glitter. Put them on a little paper towel and they dry pretty quickly. Thank you. And some will run off of a table. So while Heidi is doing that, uh, there's a couple questions. Da, 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 with my messy this, fingers. <laughs> this convection's kit uh, is available while supplies last. Thanks, Brian. Now. Um, so, but the, it's only while supplies last. So the other thing I wanted to show that you can do with this kit is you probably remember the candy looked like it was black and white. I'll refresh your memory and show you the package of the candy. These candies are black and white. Well, if you want, oh, you know what else comes in the kit is a paintbrush. I think I pulled my paintbrush for the sample. So the other thing that's really handy that's coming in your kit is a paintbrush. Just to reiterate, these candies are not edible. I've seen a lot of people say they look good. Like, don't eat these. Yes, please don't eat the candy. It's, that's, I think that's why we're calling it confection, to try to prevent people from calling it candy. And the paintbrush is handy for a couple different things in your kit. Remember how I showed you um, the etc. tags, the etc. products? love paint. They're a nice surface for painting. Well, you can use your black paint and your paintbrush to create the black spider webs. You can also use the black paint and your paintbrush to create the base for that little candy confection, um, what do you call it? The little candy jar that had all the little sugar pieces in it. You can paint with that. You can also use your paintbrush with alcohol ink. I don't know if it's recommended or not, but I don't follow directions. I just keep a paintbrush. You know, I don't know if you're like me, I have tons of paintbrushes. But you can use your paintbrush to paint using the alcohol ink on your candies. So these are black and white candies that I turned to be orange and yellow and white, which then when you put them in your little pumpkin, look that much more cheerful. So I put my pumpkin in my shrine and I painted with alcohol ink these other little candies and put it in my shrine too. I attach the bat with the red line tape. It doesn't have to dry. I've got all these little candies that can go into a snow globe. I also have all of this candy corn and that's why I put two packs of candy corn in here because you can use it to build your shrine or your candy box or confection box. I got to get away from that word candy, don't I? If you want to use it in your confection box. Now look at this little what's tucked under here. 
those are two of the spiders and it's a detail that doesn't show up as well on camera as it does in person but you can see I tucked the spider web underneath that tray base and I, I just I'm not saying that these are the things you have to do with your kit but these are some of the possibilities for you to use with your kit and I'm telling you I have just been playing with this making different colors of candy making different kinds of sugary bits uh, also my one product I wanted to mention that is not in the kit but is going to be coming soon you'll see in a lot of inspiration for the holidays is those confection pieces also come as cute candy canes so if you're thinking about projects ooh, I've got a little spider boy you got real spiders and uh, imitation spiders so anyhow these come how adorable are these candy cane confections for the season these are available at Simon Says Stamp they're a seasonal item people are loving them including me uh, for now we focused on Halloween and there's a couple of other things I want to just remind you of about the black paint that's in the kit you can also use the black paint to color your spiders you can use the black paint to make creepier pieces of candy if you want to make all of the candy black you could also use the black paint to make your bubbles turn into more cauldron like black I'm not going to do that it's too messy the black paint is hard um, for me to showcase in a live but I think you get the picture and again just to remind you you can use these snow globes upside down I don't know how well the camera is going to show that to fill it with your little candy pieces and make yourself a candy dish in your piece. Ta-da! Okay, I don't know how good of a job that was, Reed, if you wanna take me to the, the front of the camera. I just wanted to take a few minutes to show you guys the bits and pieces and baubles that are included in this confection kit for you because I just showed you a few ideas that I had with it and again, Full credit to, first of all, Tim Holtz and Advantis for developing these really fun products. They're not just for Halloween, but look at the great Halloween things we can do with them. So thank you to Tim Holtz and Advantis for creating these products. Also, I wanna say thank you to Tammy B because she inspired me to put together this kit and I have just had a wonderful time putting this kit together. And I'm hoping that my enthusiasm for these products and my enthusiasm for this kit is contagious so that you can have fun too. All of the products that I just showed you are included in the kit and make way more than the little shrine, the, the confection candy that I just showed you. They can do way more than that. So play, make other things, maybe parlay it all into your little invitations. This decoration that I made, that shrine, I'm keeping that. I'm keeping that on my counter and I'm going to use it year after year after year to decorate with. And I'll tell you what, I started doing that a few years ago with Christmas makes to make my own things and display them in my own office, in my own bedroom, in my desk, in our kitchen, in our living room, making things that I display in our house. And every year I wrap them up at the end of the season and forget about them, sadly, but I remember them again the next year. I drag out the decorations for Halloween or for Christmas and voila, I've got something handmade that I've made. A lot of those things I made, I made with my kids or my family or my sister-in-law, Wendy. We love to make together. And so just imagine that, how good that feels to make your own decorations and to bring them out. So I'm hoping that this mixed media kit whatever you want to call it, confections, candy, shrine, coffin, whatever you want to call it. I'm hoping that this kit inspires you to make things that you're going to lay around, that you're going to look and be able to enjoy year after year after year. So that's my two cents. I just hope it inspires you. It's a great value for the kit. The retail value of the products inside far exceed the, the asking price on our site. It's something that you can make and keep and share, or you can make it and share it with somebody else that you love, but you have to love them a lot. Because when you put all that glue, those glossy accents on your bubbles, man, you get your fingers stuck together, you gotta use paper towels and a sink to get it off, but it's worth it. It's a little mess, but it's definitely worth it. And I love the glitter part too. Maybe someday I'll get really seasoned on camera. Until then, to make in front of you, until then, we do have a video on our YouTube channel with Sherry Carroll going through the, the kit and we have lots of images of what other people, including Sherry 
and Nina Marie Trapani have made using this kit. All you've got to do is go to our website and look at the kit and you'll see other project ideas because it goes way beyond what I showed you today. So that's my uh, two cents about, about that kit. And I appreciate that all of you guys are here with us today live. And because you've been watching live, Reed has chosen one person to win. Did I say a $100 gift card? Because I meant a $200 gift card. Somebody today for watching us live is going to win a $200 gift card to Simon Says Stamp. You can purchase any of the things that I've shown you today and so much more. If your name is Isabel Blinkhorn, Isabel, you have won a $200 gift card to Simon Says Stamp. Just email Reed, R-E-E-D, at simonsaysstamp.com and he will take care of you. And I can't talk about candy without talking about my friend Mario because boy, does he have a stash of candy and cookies and treats that when I was visiting, working in the studio with Tim doing and Mario doing the live for Stamp Timber, Mario took such good care of us. I mean, he had anything you would have thought. And so thank you, Mario, for your thoughtfulness. And I wanna make sure I give everybody a, a, who's, who's helped us get to where we are today the, the big shout out. Do we have any questions, Reed, before we say goodbye? Because I've kind of been two. going through. What's you up? You did a great job. Um, the first question is, are there any other kits available right now? Oh, good question. We do have another kit. We're only taking pre-orders for a very short time. I think we're gonna stop pre-orders in about a week for our religious holiday kit that has a nativity theme on it. It's a Christmas kit. It is called, I think it's called the Holy Kit on our website and that's jam packed with products that you can use in your, especially in your Christmas card making. Although a lot of that stuff could be um, put into mixed media and, and other places too to make something you could decorate for the holidays. Uh, so that is another kit that's available. Unfortunately, our September card kit of the month is sold out. We do have an October card kit of the month coming. October 14th, 14 is my lucky number. That's how we chose the number 14. The 14th of every month at Simon Says Stamp, we release a new card kit of the month. And the October um, 14th release will have the card kit for November. So it's kind of a fall, Thanksgiving, thankful theme to come. Any other questions, Reed? Yeah, the last question is what is going on on the blog today and tomorrow? Oh, I'm so glad. Reed does such a good job of asking me the things I, I, I have on my list buried underneath this stuff. So on our blog today and tomorrow is more inspiration for you. We have a blog hop. Makers all around the world have taken the product that we have mailed them and we have designed and we've had made and they've actually created inspiration for you. Cards, tags, envelopes, mixed media, you name it, there's a blog hop. So if you go to simonsistiantblog.com, you'll find the list of people who are making for today, and then tomorrow, we will be making again. You'll have another list of people. Look at my hands, oh my gosh. I don't know how, Tim, I, I don't know if he's still live with us, but Tim, I don't know how you keep your hands so clean because I touch one thing and I get alcohol ink everywhere, my ear, my hair, my arm. So anyhow, I'm just a messy crafter, but that's, that's the way I, that's, that's the way I am. So thank you to everybody for joining us live today. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to make for my very first time on camera with other people watching. It is what it is, but I had fun, and I really hope you enjoy this confection coffin kit, too. Have a great day.